It's impossible to talk about the climate crisis without acknowledging communities of color, lower wealth communities, and indigenous people who have been disproportionately impacted. They have borne the brunt of this ongoing crisis due to a history of systemic racism that exposed these communities to toxins and disease. But now there is a new push for environmental justice coming from the highest levels of government and grassroots organizers around the country. South Memphis is a predominantly black community. This is a remarkable place. Right here, there's a small community called Boxtown. The oldest African-American black community in Memphis. The folks are descendants of formerly enslaved people who post-emancipation built Boxtown. It gets its name because the people used some of the materials from boxcars that were near the railway station to actually build their homes. And so they're carrying the history of freedmen and freed women literally in their DNA. There's a responsibility to protect this community. And there's a deep level of concern about what's happening. Justin J. Pearson is a 27-year-old activist with deep ties to South Memphis. Hey, you can kind of smell it. Yeah, the smell changed, didn't it? It smelled like Right? Like, now imagine coming to school some days and it's smelling like this. And you're just trying to figure out, what is that? Like, is that sewage? Like, what is it? But no, it's these stackers. It's like the dirtiest part of the after smell of a match going out. We would go to my grandmother's houses every Sunday after church. You drive up off the exit, and there are these pillows of smoke. And as a kid, I was fascinated by it. And it wasn't until relatively recently, I would say, that I began to understand that the folks who breathe that air, right, that's us. What we get to greet us is not a welcome to Southwest Memphis sign. What we get are these toxins, these billows of smoke and chemicals that are literally killing us. Over the years, South Memphis has seen industrial factories encroach upon its borders. Today, there are 29 toxic facilities releasing chemicals into the air. In the South Memphis area, we do see a disproportionate amount of pneumonias, bronchitis, diabetes, autoimmune diseases, and air pollution is probably the largest environmental factor in those diseases. When I was growing up, there was a place that was a chemical factory over there, and we lived around it. And so many of the people around that area developed breast cancer on the same street, on the same block. There are a whole lot of people in this area had got sick and died. They pretend they didn't know what was wrong with them. This is my dad, Miller T. Nicholson. He was diagnosed with lung cancer in 2010. There is something systematically going on that is killing us. You redline black folks into a particular community where toxins are being pumped into the air. And the consequences are in the death rate, are in the cancer rates, are in the asthma rates of our community. The folks in these communities are the ones who bear the burden of environmental racism. They bear the burden of economic injustice. They bear these burdens and they're screaming that is a perpetuation of injustice that has happened in this place called America and Southwest Memphis for far too long. Environmental injustices look like Cancer Alley between New Orleans and Baton Rouge, where we have these cancer clusters where communities who were freed from slavery founded their own communities and then petrochemical facilities began to surround them, to pollute them, to take away their hope and their possibilities for a better future. Now there is a threat coming not just from the air, but from the ground below. 
There is a proposal to build the Bihalia Pipeline, a 45-mile crude oil pipeline which would run through South Memphis on top of the city's main source of clean drinking water. The pipeline is going to go through here about 100 yards that way. We are standing next to a feeder well, and this pump is pulling water up from the Memphis Sand Aquifer, which is about three or 400 feet below here. And that's the pristine, good water. It's pre-industrial, pre-plastic, no PFAS in it. It's just good, pure water, which is why we like to keep it that way. Ward Archer is one of the many grassroots activists fighting to protect the water supply for residents of South Memphis. Anybody who thinks a pipeline doesn't leak is living in a dream world. So this red line is the proposed Bahalia pipeline. These are people's homes. And the pipeline is almost adjacent to it. You know, I didn't realize it was that close. As long as Westwood and, and Boxtown are the ones carrying the risk of this, it's OK. But when it was Collierville or Germantown, nope, they said, no, we can't do those routes. And why? You, you know why. <laughs> you know why. It's racial and it's economic. There was a community meeting that Bahalia Pipeline held. And they were asked by one of the members of the community, why did you all choose this route? And there's usually a PR answer. But instead, the representative was pretty clear and plain. And what did he say? We basically chose a point of least resistance. When people aren't scripted, you can really learn what they believe and what they think. But they didn't check the boxes of resilience. They didn't check the boxes of courage of the people in the community. And so now, that point and path of least resistance is one of the most significant points of resilience and, in some ways, revolution that's happening in our country. No more oil in our soil. Do not come and bamboozle our people. This pipeline will be a, a bomb for us in this neighborhood. I'd like to meet you. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, sir. Appreciate what you are doing. Yes, sir. Who's, who's taking the picture? Vice President and environmental activist Al Gore has taken an interest in the movement, attending the rally put on by the Memphis community against the pipeline. I know the water is good. I'm almost 70 years old. And I remember the water coming out of the ground. We had an old pump. And that water would come out of the ground so cold and good. We didn't have a whole lot, <laughs> but we had everything. If anybody is ever tempted to feel like we don't have the ability, that you don't have the ability as a community to win this battle, you just remember that political will is itself a renewable resource. Thank you. Keep up the fight. These polluting companies have learned how to use their money and political power to serve their interests instead of the public interest. And the only way to counter that is to have many more people at the grassroots level speaking up and speaking out. Dr. King, when he was convincing folks to come to Memphis for the sanitation worker strike, said this, the movement lives or dies in Memphis. The environmental justice movement continues to grow and expand. People are also saying that we can win on the climate crisis if we come together and we center racial justice and environmental justice issues. This is a moment when we can bring hope back to communities, where we can reinvest in communities. We have a chance to move people from surviving to thriving. We have a chance for a new day.